Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 909 that says snakes and ladders. So this question is typically based on the snakes and ladders uh, board game. So where we have uh, and cross and size board and we played with the dice of six six faced dice and there are snakes and ladders from a cell uh, to the towers from a cell to a cell. So similarly, uh, this question is, so here also we are given one end cross and matrix that represent the board. And further, our starting position is 1 and our ending position is n square. This is where we win our game, right? And from uh, the current destination, we can choose 6 possible next uh, steps. So uh, means if you are at position 5, then we can you can move to 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That is 6 next uh, uh, cells because the dice is of 6 sided with the values from 1 to 6. Also, the, uh, this board has represent some value. So if it is a minus one, that means there is no snake or ladder. As if it is, it has some value. That means, let's say this cell seventeen has some value thirteen. So uh, you can uh, think like like that that there is a snake. That's why you are moving backward from seventeen to thirteen. So if you uh, as if you are at cell two and the value of this cell two is fifteen, that means there is a ladder from two to fifteen. So we will travel through this ladder. We have to travel through this ladder. We can't ignore any snake or ladder if the current cell has some value. Got it? Uh, so here in this example, we are given this uh, 6 cross 6 that is 36 size board. So as you can see this input, so this input is given in the reverse order like 36 to 31, then 30 to 25, then 24 to 19. So that way this input is given. Let's say from left to right, then again right to left and left to right. So this is how the input is given. So as you can see here. Uh, so now let's try to uh, travel th uh, through this in given input. Okay, so I hope you guys understood the question uh, that uh, we are at initial position one. We need to move till six, and for and each stage we have six possible next steps. Got it? So let's say uh, if uh, so here we are at one. So let's say uh, you you got one on the dice and you move to two. Since there is a ladder, so you go move to fifteen. So that's what that's how in one move you are from one to fifteen. Assume that you get two in the next row. So from fifteen to seventeen, you move from fifteen to seventeen. But since there is a snake. So you move to 13 right so now in the third move you got one so you move from 13 to 14 that is a ladder you climb the ladder and move to 35 okay so in the th in three moves you reach 35 and in the last move you move from 35 to 36 so that's how you can see that uh, in only four moves you can uh, you move from 1 to 36 and that's that's the best possible answer so uh, in the end you need to return the least number of moves to reach this uh, n square that to reach the n goal or the last cell of the board. So I have you understood this. Uh, now let's talk about this next question. Let me draw a board for you for this input. So this is a uh, two cross two that is four cell board. This is the board. Let me give the numbering. This is four. This is three. This is two. And this is one. And the values are minus one, minus one, minus one, and so this what does this three mean? There is a ladder from this cell to the cell three. So yeah. So what would be the answer of this case? So initially you start from one. Since there is a ladder, so you move directly to this three. So thus in zeroth move you are at three, and you take one move, and you move from three to four. And yeah, that's our answer. And then you move from three to four. Got it? So one is the answer as you can reach. Uh, to the move uh, to the cell 4 in one move so as you can see here one is the answer one thing to notice here is n can be maximum 20 thus uh, our board uh, or this board can be of maximum uh, size 20 cross 20 that is 400 now in order to solve this what what uh, see you need to find uh, best possible answer right but how you can find th this answer the only way uh, you can find best possible answer is trying all possibility okay so uh, that means that in, if you for all the current cell let's say if you are at currently 7 there are 6 possible uh, next state that is 8 9 10 11 12 and 13 so for each possible uh, position there is 6 next possible state right so uh, the only way to derive the best possible answer is to traverse all the possible state from the current state and, th 
and the best way to do this is using a traversal technique like DFS or BFS. So yeah, we can do any of this, either DFS or BFS. So one thing, but one thing to note here is if you try recursion, then it won't work. Why? So you, you might be thinking why recursion won't work because the number of states would be so high that you won't be able to uh, generate that in our answer. Uh, you will get some error like memory limit etc or something because let's say if there are n cells and from each cell there are six possible state so the number of possible state in total would be n is to six got it because for n cells there are six possible state and that's why this number would be so large that you won't be able to generate all the next possible state so recursion won't work here and that that's why we will use bfs so bfs would be q implementation right so yeah we would do bfs traversal here and let me now show you the code how we would solve this question so that's what we would do first is first we will try to convert this board of n plus n uh, matrix into a linear board so that would be easy for us for further co computation during bfs so let me take one vector of int b of size n cross n and let me prefill it with minus one Okay, and before that, let me take n as the size of the board. So now let us let uh, let uh, so now we will run a for loop from here up till here and in this fashion, like from left to right and then right to left. Okay. I greater than equal to zero i minus minus. So this n minus one. So because uh, this is the first, this is the one numbering and that is present at the last. The last row represents the starting row. So that's why I started from here. Now we will travel from left to right. And we will do something. And similarly, we will travel from right to left. That is from j equals to n minus 1, j greater than or equal to 0 and j minus minus. Okay. Now before that, let me take one count variable, initialize it at 0. And uh, if uh, board of i comma j ij is not equal to minus one in that case what i would do i would push uh, i would also store that in this b that is our new board and do count plus plus okay count plus plus i would keep it as here and the same thing i will do this at here as well also, uh, what I will do is I will check that uh, one thing here that if count is less than b dot size or not. I will uh, tell you about this why I am checking this here. Okay, yeah. So uh, to why to why we need to check this? So if there is some board like this, let me draw it of size three cross three, like this. Like this there is a board so in one round you travels you travel from here to here now in second round you have to only travel to here because there is no other uh, traversal to travel from here to here right that's why to stop going to this loop means to stop uh, looping here we have put this condition that if we have reached the end of this new board then we would stop correct and one another thing is we would store board of ij minus one because uh, here uh, this is zero indexed and this board values are given as per the one index so that's why we took minus one here got it now after that we will take one distance item vector int distance and that would be also a size of n cross n and we would store int max value in it and we will also take one q and uh, we would push q uh, uh, the zeroth element in the queue that is the first element and we will also make the distance of the zeroth element as zero now what we will do we will do the standard bfs traversal until the queue is empty we would first take the current element current that is present at the front of the queue we would pop that element and we would traverse all the six side that is from i equal to one i is less than equal to 6 i plus plus and 
uh, we would take the next element from this board see if there is an if there is some let's say value in this b that means there is either either a snake or ladder that means if b of current plus i is not equal to minus one in that case we will take b of current plus i uh, so here it would be question mark and here it would be colon that means as part so in the as part we would simply do current plus i okay and we would check that if distance of next equal equal to int max then we would update the distance uh, of next would that is distance till current plus one that means that means you made one move so that's why plus one and we would uh, add this next into the queue as well okay now before moving ahead we have to write one more condition that if current plus i should be less than b dot size so if you let's say if you have this at this cell 34 then you can't take three step ahead that would be out of bounds so to handle that we have uh, made added this condition yeah everything looks good and in the end what we would do we would return the number the distance of n square minus one that is uh, here so basically this distance will store number of jump, uh, number of or you can say jumps or moves uh, to reach the current index i okay so yeah let us now try to run this okay it would be there would be a semi here it's a dst okay we are getting some error of uh heap of for overflow address that means we are there is some overflow of address at some place let us try to debug this okay i found that it here it will be the current plus i and not one now let us try to run it again let us try to submit this Okay, some wrong answer. Okay, so one thing we forgot here is we also need to decrement this i. So with the help of i, what we are doing, we are just trying to move with the row. So whenever we have traversed this row, we also we have to decrement this i, and then we will traverse all the columns of this row. So that's why here i minus 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 will come. Okay, now let us try to run it. So yeah, now all the test cases are passed. Now let us try to submit this. okay uh, it is minus 1 so yeah one thing i forgot to tell you that if it is not possible to reach then we would return minus 1 so if this is equals to int max then we would return minus 1 else we would simply return the answer so now let me add this here and let us try to trace this again mm, equal to int max most okay it's just So yeah, our code got accepted now. Right, uh, I hope you guys understood the intuition as well as the approach that we are using here to solve this question. Now talking about the time complexity, since we are traversing all the n, uh, all the means uh, n square number of uh, cells, uh, because see, if we have traversed, let's say if the next cell is traversed, that means the distance array won't be int max. So, so then we won't add that to the queue. If it is not traversed, then only we are adding to the queue. That means. That the overall n uh, time complexity would be n square, uh, n for the when n is the size of the board, that is either the row or the column. And talking about the space complexity, the space complexity would be also n square because we are we are using here the distance array of size n square. So both the time and space complexity would be n square. So that's all for this video. I hope you guys understood this approach as well as the coding part here. Uh, make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.